Hey everybody, Elliot with Cabernet Corp here. I've got Bob Burton uh, from Burton Vineyards, the owner. And today we're drinking as he's holding the Black Shiraz. Thank you so much for joining us, Bob. Cheers, Elliot. Nice to see you, mate. Absolutely, you too. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, about the Black Shiraz? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Black Shiraz isn't a specific specific type of variety. It's a bit more of a you know a marketing name. You know, showing kind of the deep dark concentration, perhaps in the in the glass. It's funny, but um, like when I was a child, my godfather had grew grapes, and they he always called he was Italian descent, so he always called Shiraz the Black Shiraz. Okay. And that's that's always been in my mind, okay? So he used to call it Black Shiraz. And that was because Trebbiano was called White Shiraz. Oh, okay. So if you, you know, there was actually a rationale behind it, but this is going back in the 50s. Sure, so, yeah. Um, so for us, we wanted to differentiate or the, the Shiraz from ordinary Shiraz because of what we were doing with the style. Okay. So the Black Shiraz is all about uh, deep concentration. It's all about picking it late so that we get full, almost desiccation on the berries. So we're getting a little bit of dehydration and concentration. Um, the skins are softer. Um, and when it goes through ferment, we lose obviously volume, but we are effectively going down like this, the Amarone path. Okay. okay. Me, one of the benchmarks in my life was Amarone, and that's all about dehydrated fruit. Well, we're doing that on the vine in a way that we can actually uh, have everybody taste it. Sure. And the metal, of course, was important so that people would actually notice it and get to try it. Nice, nice. And um, so in terms of, of that dark, deep intensity that you're just talking about, um, what am I getting on the nose and palate here? Well, it's usually dark cherries, like in this one. It's uh, black cherries, a little bit of um, a little bit of licorice. Mm -hmm. I tend to get those sort of notes coming through. Um, uh, if you wait and let it sit for a while, it's sort of um, there's a little bit of a, a, a fruit cake, you know, like Christmas cake. Yeah, sure. Christmas. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, and, and notes of like nutmeg and nutmeg at the bottom, which is like, if you put it all together, it sounds, what the hell? <laughs> but as it's happening, it's, it's amazing. So, Absolutely. No, there's some really nice layers on it. And, um, you know, you can see, you can see that concentration and get, get those um, different layers in the palate. Um, is there a certain amount of oak that you use here to, to kind of help balance that out? Um, what's the, what's the winemaking technique here? On this one, a lot of it, because of um, where it's positioned in the market, we tend to we tend to use French oak uh, staves, mm -hmm. um, and about a quarter of it will sit in barrels for you know three to six months, but gotcha. not more, so that we go through that process because it's 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 uh, um, it's a balancing act as far as when the oak is the most important thing and when the fruit is. So we're trying to keep that tone down. Gotcha. Yeah, no, it's um, it's not over oaked by any means. You still get the depth and concentration without having to be too uh, too wooded. Yeah. <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a it's got a nice finish on the on the palate, so it's got length. Um, it, there's, no, there's none of the classic like the Cabernet that will have which will have quite obvious oak tannins on the on the back palate. Um, this is all about really lovely soft fruit, broad fruit almost um, across your palate. So again, it's a terrific little steak. Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah I bet. Um, well, thanks so much for telling us a little bit about this. Go out and try our Black Shiraz uh, by Burton Vineyards. Thank you so much for joining us. Exactly.